Yeah, I mean, I want to ask Kane Williamson, uh, is Jimmy Neesham the funniest man uh, on Twitter or the funniest cricketer? You know, I think he said he's not even the funniest man in the team. <laughs> yeah, I think, he, I think he said I wasn't funny at all. Uh, I, I take offence to that. Uh, I think we've actually already had discussed it a couple of times. He's apologised profusely for it. He said he was incorrect. Time for another ESPN Quick Info One on One, the Work from Home edition. Jimmy Nisham joins us from his home in Auckland. Jimmy, trust you're well. How are things going in the lockdown? Hey mate, uh, pleasure to join you. Um, yeah, it's been it's been fine. It's obviously uh, a little bit different to, to regular everyday life, but um, yeah, we've been managing um, pretty well. Obviously, New Zealand's probably one of the countries in the world that's been um, hit the least um, compared to some others. So. Um, we're pretty fortunate in that respect. So it's just about trying to do what we can to, to get rid of it and then hopefully move on. So what's lockdown been like? A number of cricketers telling me of new skills they've developed, some spending more time in the kitchen, baking and whatnot. Any new skills that you've discovered or you've uh, harnessed in this time? Um, I'm trying to learn how to do like handstand push-ups. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of like a little thing I've been doing um, sort of at the end of a few gym sessions to try and get used to. I'm still terrible, but um, it's sort of work in progress. And um, I suppose the other one is uh, when I take the dog out for a walk, I've been trying to sort of throw a few left-handed and see if I can get a, a decent left-handed throw on me, which is uh, another one which is terrible, but also a work in progress. So, so at what stage of the handstand push-up are we now, would you say? Uh, a a zero point five out of ten, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I, I'm so sort of, I'm trying to get the I can do like a handstand push up like against a wall, right? Um, but then now it's the case of trying to get like the balance and and be able to do it kind of freestanding. And I'm assuming the most difficult part of the whole thing is <laughs> then trying to do a handstand push up while balancing. So I reckon. Yeah. If you think of it as in three stages, I'm a third of the way there. But if you think of it as in how difficult it is. Actually, is I'm probably about three percent of the way there. All right, <laughs> you know, you you recently crowdsourced uh, uh, equipment to set up a gym at home. So how did that go? Yeah, yeah, we were very lucky. Um, Auckland Cricket, actually, Eden Park is uh, only a couple of k's down the road from us, so um, they were obviously shutting down um, for the lockdown, and uh, we managed to get in just on the last day. And well, first we tried to go um, around to the department stores and. Um, the warehouse and those things to try and buy equipment but it was obviously a few other people had had that idea as well and it was pretty much all cleaned <laughs> out so yeah um, I think there are there are a few kind of 2.5 kg weights and stuff left which um, obviously wasn't going to be enough so um, now we're very lucky that Auckland Cricket were, were generous enough to, to sort of lend us that stuff for the for the lockdown and, um, I imagine in a couple of weeks or a week or so when we go back to level one um, we'll have to give it all back so I might have to yeah. go shopping again. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's what I was going to ask. Careful choice of words. They've lent it to you. They haven't gifted yeah. it to you. you. They expect it back at the end of this lockdown? Oh, they were very clear that they expected it back <laughs> at the end of lockdown. Even they made us write a list of what we'd taken and all that kind of thing. So we'll definitely be checking that list off again when we uh, go take, take it all back again. But no, I couldn't be happier with how it's been um, working. It's actually been a bit of a lifesaver having that gym set up. All right, let's talk about what else you've been up to other than uh, spending time in, in your home gym. Um, are you a big uh, web series man? Is there stuff you've been watching online that you want to tell me about? What's keeping you busy? Um, yep, yep. I'm just coming to the, the end of Blacklist, um, which has Ooh. been, I, I think it's one of my favourite series I've ever watched um, on Netflix or the like, and really enjoying that. And um, obviously we've got the Michael Jordan documentary as well, sort of being released um, week by week. So I've been checking in for that every uh, I think it's Tuesday night, Monday or Tuesday night in New Zealand that it comes out. So, um, yeah, I've been looking at that. But then uh, other than that, just sort of um, playing a bit of PlayStation and taking the dog for walks, as I, as I mentioned. And, um, yeah, just trying to keep busy in general. Yeah, I'm a big James Spader fan, but I couldn't get through more than, what, two seasons of The Blacklist. Did you watch the whole thing? Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm right at the end. So I think we've got about wow. five, or, five or ten episodes to go. So um, now I'm loving it. And what's it on PlayStation that keeps you busy? Um, well, NBA as well, um, 2K20, so big basketball fan. And um, yeah, obviously the, the sort of easy easy plays like Fortnite and Call of Duty and those sorts of things. Um, but a little bit 
29 now. I think all the youngsters on those shooting games have obviously got quicker reactions and know what they're doing because I just get absolutely murdered every game. But uh, it's a let's, uh, let's talk about stuff that maybe the team management or the franchises have asked you to do, which I don't think includes PlayStation. But is there a lot of chat right now with the New Zealand team management or the Kings Eleven franchise? Are they expecting players to do anything while, uh, while in this lockdown? Um, oh, ironically, actually, PlayStation has been brought up by, really? by New Zealand Cricket as a, a way to um, sort of keep fans engaged with sort of guys playing against each other and that sort of thing. So you, you think it isn't a major point, but it is. Gee, everything about New Zealand is just so likable. I mean, they've, they've literally, New Zealand Cricket has told its players to play PlayStation. I cannot imagine a BCCI directive to tell uh, the BCCI boys to start playing PlayStation for team building. But anyway, that's just New Zealand, I guess. Uh, I'm guessing it's helping. Are you any good though? Are you better than the other team in uh, the PlayStation games that you've been playing with them? I mean, the guys play a lot on tour and stuff. So there's a lot of uh, FIFA and basketball and stuff gets played. Uh, Henry Nichols is pretty good. He's uh, mm-hmm. He's got the reflexes, obviously, even though he's getting a bit <laughs> old as well. But um, Matt Henry is useless. So he's terrible. Batsmen are usually better than bowlers, I reckon. Really? What do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself more of a batsman or a bowler? Um, I'm whatever will get picked in the team. Um, <laughs> some, sometimes it's been um, obviously a specialist batsman. Sometimes it's been an opening batsman, which was interesting. Um, other times it's, it's with the ball first. So, um, no, nah, for me, it's just a case of anything that gets me on the park and, and any way I can contribute to hopefully getting a win, I'm more than happy with, even if it's working keeping. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the IP. And I know cricket's uh, the least of our concerns this time. These times have taught us that. But let's assume at some point we'll have cricket back in, you know, in, in the time that we wanted to. Uh, you've been part of IPL franchises in the past, but was there a feeling that this was the time to, to make a mark really in the IPL, especially with the kind of year you've been having? You regularly feature now with the New Zealand side as well. Was, was that feeling there that this is going to be my IPL, that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, there was that feeling. I think um, you always try and be positive, I suppose, going into a tournament like that. But um, I suppose looking back over uh, my IPL career, I guess, I picked it in 2014. Um, I sort of look back at almost a kid then, I guess. I'd played kind of half a season for New Zealand. I wasn't really a cemented player in that team. And um, to sort of be thrust into the IPL, um, the pressure and all that that comes with it, I, I probably wasn't quite ready. I wasn't. Um, I suppose bedded in as as the sort of player that I could have been, um, got picked up for Kolkata the next season, but had to pull out with a with a back injury. So um, it's been a a long time between drinks as far as going to the IPL was. I think um, five seasons maybe I missed out on. Um, so yeah, I was certainly looking forward to to getting over there again with a little bit more um, surety about my game. But um, yeah, we're keeping in contact reasonably regularly with with Kings Eleven about what what the likely scenarios are. And, um, from what I've heard, there's, there's still a fair bit of optimism that the tournament may continue sort of later in the year sometimes. So um, I suppose there's no shortage of motivation for me to, to continue training in what capacity I can. And um, certainly just because the tournament's been delayed by six months or eight months or however long doesn't in any way mean that my impact can be less. So um, it's just a case of um, making sure we're, we're ready to go whenever that time comes and, and yeah, really trying to enjoy it. If anything, you'll be ready with a handstand push-up in six months, I reckon. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to have to email them again and change my clothing sizes because there's a lot of bicep curls and shoulder raises and stuff going on. So, yeah, there'll be a few cricketers, I reckon, are going to come out of this in pretty good shape. Yeah, we, we, one would hope that it's, it's, it's for the positive and not the other way around. But, yeah, I expect that from professional sportsmen. Uh, some good cricketers, some serious beasts that you could play alongside whenever the IPL does happen. Chris Gale's in that team. Uh, Glenn Maxwell, KL Rahul, anyone in particular that you're really looking forward to playing with whenever the IPL resumes? Yeah, I saw Chris Gale stormed home in the uh, the T20 player of the century vote on Crick Info a couple of days ago, which is good to see from a fellow Kings League in Punjab. Pretty straightforward, wasn't it, that vote? <laughs> yeah, I heard it was just like picking straws. It was fine. It was There was no controversy at all. So, um, yeah, obviously me and uh, KL had um, a few battles in the home summer, um, just gone, and um, he seems like a pretty good bloke as well. And uh, Mayan Kagawal and, and Mohamed Shami I played with back at Delhi way back in 2014 as well. So um, there's a few familiar faces there. And um, also you've got the likes of you know, Glenn Maxwell and Sheldon Cottrell as well, who are 
uh, making waves on international career. So we certainly have an exciting team. Um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we get to show what we can do with that team. Um, but yeah, time will have to tell. What's your preferred format, though, Jimmy? Uh, I, I find it's it's a little bit like food. I reckon you, you sort of you have your favourite um, cuisine, whether it's your pizza or your you know your kebabs or whatever, and um, you have it for a couple of days in a row, and you sort of feel like something else. And I sort of feel like that's how I treat the, the cricket formats almost. I, I do enjoy T Twenty a lot, um, but then also after a full T Twenty campaign, you do start really enjoying four day cricket and the grind and that sort of thing. So if I had to pick one. Um, the prestige is still in Test Cricket. I still want to play Test Cricket again. Um, but I'm really enjoying um, both the white ball formats as well. Yeah, I mean, as much as you might enjoy pizzas and kebabs, the two things you named, I don't think you can keep having that. As good as your stomach might be. It, it yeah, won't help yeah. enhance hand push-ups as well, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've got to have a salad every now and then. Yeah, but but I, I like that you point out uh, that you still enjoy the longer format. And it takes me back to your Test debut. One hell of a game that was. Uh, Wellington 2014. New Zealand were behind in that game significantly, what, 90 out of five in the third innings. And on your debut, you stitched that partnership together. Brendan McCullum gets a triple hundred. That must have been some experience as a first initiation into Test cricket. Yeah, it was pretty special, obviously. Um, any game that you're still talking about sort of six years later is, is obviously going to be a pretty significant one. And um, yeah, obviously, as, you, as your first test to be standing out of the room and Brendan McCullum gets his 300, the only 300 in our game, um, is obviously an amazing achievement. But um, the thing that I actually remember almost the most about the whole game was it could have been yes. the best victory in Test history because we were bowling on day five and I think we had India maybe two down, one or two down before lunch. And Virat Kohli, cover drove, absolutely smashed the cover off one to BJ Watland keeper, given not out. And then he went on to get 100, and obviously the game ended up being a draw. But I always think back to that, that morning and think, oh, if we managed to get India three down on the fifth morning, that could have been one of the great comeback victories of all time. But obviously you have to settle with, uh, with obviously, the great series win that we managed to get that series. Uh, but you've got, you've got a nice relationship with Brendan McCullough. He was captain when you started off, and now I can see that the uh, relationship evolves into some serious banter on Twitter. He's compared you to an alpaca in the past. You've called him a grandfather who can't upload a picture or just manages to get it in time. What's, what's that relationship like? Um, yeah, we've obviously got a, got a great relationship. We, um, we even we played for Otago um, together before I got picked for New Zealand. So um, even before playing internationally, um, I was sort of banning it around from him. And um, also he's, he's been my coach as well at Trinidad, obviously the Knight Riders and the CPL. So um, yeah, New Zealand's a pretty small country when you, um, I suppose you have those relationships with players, you, you sort of see them all over the world because there's only about sort of nine or ten of us that actually get picked up in these kind of T20 leagues. So um, you want to try to stick together as much as you can. Um, New yeah. Zealand is a, a unique people. We have a unique, unique <laughs> sense of humour. So um, it's nice to be able to have that banter um, with one of your teammates and not worry about them getting offended. Yeah, I mean, I once asked Kane Williamson, uh, is Jimmy Nisham the funniest man uh, on Twitter, the funniest cricketer he knows? And I think he said he's not even the funniest man in the team. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think, he, I think he said I wasn't funny at all. And I, I take offence to that. Um, and I'll be speaking to him about it frequently from now on. Uh, I think we've actually already have discussed it a couple of times. He's apologised profusely for it. He said he was incorrect. Sounds like Ian Williamson do apologize. Now, if I am to go back to that World Cup final, I'm sure you've been, you're almost bored of conversation on it, but for what it's worth, uh, let's have a conversation. Just say, you okay with that? Yeah, what's another one? <laughs> like I said, we'll, we'll remember the, the parts of it that we like in time to come, right? Uh, but it was one hell of a game. I mean, it was the mother of all World Cup finals. I think any cricket fan would, would say that. But let's just talk about at what point during that intense afternoon, was the team made aware of the absurd rule that this could be decided on a boundary count? I mean, did it even happen before the Super Over? Did it happen somewhat into when you went to bat? And at what point were you made aware of that? that rule? Was, was the team made aware? Um, I was padding up in the changing room um, for the Super Over. Um, so, no, I hadn't been mentioned at any point before that. Um, although, having said that, I, I have actually won a game on boundary count back in a Super Over before in my career. So um, it wasn't much of a surprise to me once I heard it. And at what point was the decision taken that you and Marty Guptill would 
who played the Super Bowl. Was that a quick one? Was it some? Was it batsmen who wanted to offer their that put their hand up and say I'll go play, or was that sort of decided quickly? Um, we sort of had a bit of a group discussion after the the initial 50 over game was tied, and um, obviously the England boys got to go back into the changing room and have a bit of a drink and um, come back out again and. Um, yeah, we just had a discussion out of the middle of the field, really, a, a couple of the senior guys. And, um, yeah, Kane just said that it'd be me and Guppy, and um, we'd figure out who was batting three uh, when the time came. So, um, yeah, we knew reasonably far out that that, that was going to be the case. We tend to overanalyze and overcomplicate this from so far out. We try and think about what a cricketer is going through when he's playing the Super Over for a World Cup final. It's almost unprecedented, and you had virtually no time to prepare yourself for it. Uh, I don't think too many cricketers think about what they're going to do in the Super Over of a World Cup final. But if I am to ask you what went through your mind when it happened, can you put words to it? Um, oh, I think first and foremost, you've got to take care of what's in front of you. And um, obviously, being in one of the hot spots in the field, I and mean, the death overs are long on, I sort of knew that there'd be a high chance that I had to do something in the field before I batted. And it didn't end up being that way. But um, yeah, you just got to try and focus on what's in front of you. and. Um, when we went out to bat, it was sort of needing 16 off the off the super over is obviously a, an almost unreachable kind of number. So um, the pressure was was pretty pretty well off, I guess, by that point. I don't think you'd ever blame someone for not getting 16. So um, yeah, it was just about trying to make contact as clean as possible, as often as possible. And um, yeah, one 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 short, 20 centimeters short. It's yeah. obviously. Um, a 20 centimetres that I'm probably going to think about a fair bit over the next 50 years, but um, salary, I guess. Maybe until you win the next one, perhaps. Maybe then it'll get easier. Yeah, I was, I was reading yesterday, actually, that the, the White Ferns came runners-up in the two World Cups before they eventually won in 2000. So maybe that's just a lot of New Zealand cricketers have to get the silver medal twice before they finally get the big one. So... I, hopefully I I'm can't still imagine. playing in, in three years' time. Hopefully I'm still on the team and, and yeah, we can rectify that. Yeah, I can't imagine this happening one more time. Yeah, but let, let's let's see how 2015, 2019, so maybe it is 2023. It'll be in India. That'll, that's as good as it could get. Uh, after the 2019 final, I mean, I think New Zealand won so many hearts. Uh, you know, Kane Williamson won so many hearts around the world. He, he took it with great dignity, presented himself as you'd expect a great leader to. But if I am to ask you with time now, uh, how did the team really take it? Was there more emotions shown later on? Uh, was there any anger at all? Any tears, perhaps? I think it was probably more more disbelief than a sort of feeling of, of being hard done by or, you know, feeling unlucky. It was just kind of, I remember I sat next to Kane in the changing rooms for maybe two or three hours after the game and um, it was sort of your normal jovial stuff and, you know, having a laugh and having a couple of beers and then, Every now and then I'd kind of look across and he'd just be kind of looking at the ground and he'd sort of go, how did that happen? And, and then he'd sort of click out of it and come, come back into the back into the conversation and all that kind of thing. So I think um, one of the blessings, I think, from us as a team was that um, we all went our separate ways after the tournament and some guys went on holiday around Europe with their partners and, and other guys, I went to Canada and played in the, the Global T20 Canada in Toronto and um, it was sort of a great way to kind of park that bus and, and sort of everyone dealt with it in their own way. Um, and then by the time we came back together again, um, it was something to be joked about rather than something to yeah. cry about, I guess. I was just going to ask you, is it one of those things now that you can make light of in time? Or is it the kind of thing that, no, no, it's too soon, don't talk about it. It is something that you have made fun of or can make light of with the rest of the team now? Um, within the team, I think, yeah. I think it, it's it's probably... A little bit different um, when people from outside that bubble try and joke about it. it it's kind of still hurts a little bit, I guess. Um, but I think, yeah, us as a group, it was, it was sort of the only way we could really move forward was, um, you know, taking the piss out of each other for the mistakes we made in the game and, you know, kind of trying to, I suppose, lighten that burden on guys who um, took it hardest because obviously there's going to be a, a different range of, of guys who took it badly and took it well, depending on sort of how much of an effect you could have had on the outcome. And yeah. um, there's obviously guys at the back end of the game who are more involved than others. So um, I think, yeah, it's just about understanding that different people are going to be going through different journeys and, and that sort of thing. But I think 
um, now most of the guys are pretty much out the other side of it. Yeah, I, I totally get how this would not be funny from someone from the outside. I'm just hoping that if one of you tell Mari Gaptila, you could have just, you know, placed it in the gap that last ball we could have made too. That's not something that he looks at you with, you know, ready to, to, to knock you out. And, and, and there is a funnier side to it. I can see you being someone that can lighten the mood. Or are you the kind that tends to go over and then suddenly someone says, no, Jimmy, too soon, not now? Um, I think I dance the tightrope a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think you, you leave leave that sort of banter to the senior guys, like sort of Tim sure. Southey's good at that sort of thing and, and keeping it light. So, um, yeah, I, I can have a little bit of a, um, a harsher sure. tone, I guess, to some of my remarks. So I try and keep it light <laughs> as much as I can. Did you manage to get any sleep that night, Jimmy? Yeah, I woke up, so I assume that means I must have had to have been asleep. Um, I don't really, in all honesty, re- remember going to bed. But um, yeah, no, it was sort of we woke up in the in the hotel, and um, it was a it was sort of a, a waking up from a bad dream, I guess, and then um, to find out that um, Roger Federer had lost in the Wimbledon final as well the day before just really topped it off. So. No, yeah, it was, an, it was a good, it was a good Sunday. It, it, I know that you reacted to uh, the subsequent rule change when it came out from the ICC, right? They got rid of the boundary counts and they got to play the Super over again. You made a nice Titanic reference. I think that that was you, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So if you had the power to to make that rule now, how would you have wanted the World Cup final to be decided? Well, first of all, it's kind of human nature that. Um, things don't change until something catastrophic makes it apparent that they have to change. I think we see that with sort of gun regulations and, and all sorts of things where, you know, it takes a tragedy sometimes to actually people to see that things shouldn't be the way they are. And um, Obviously rules in a career game are, are nowhere near that important, but um, I think it's pretty clear. You look at American sports like baseball going to extra innings and, and basketball going to double, triple overtimes. I think, um, I would have just liked to see another super over, really. I don't think any of the, the 26 or 27,000 at the ground would have disagreed. I don't think anyone's going home. Yeah, I mean, I have this pet peeve when it comes to one rule in cricket that you want to get rid of. And I've, it's, it's not given enough attention, in my opinion. But I think the ricochets of the batsman for the overthrows should be done, done with. I mean, it, it didn't need a World Cup final to tell you that. But it's just the, the one thing that cricket can so easily get rid of. I don't, do you stand? Where do you stand on that, if I had time? Well, it's such a strange game, cricket. There's so many different <laughs> nuances and, um, you know, a batsman tries to, you know, leaves the ball and gets hit and it rolls away. You know, it doesn't count as runs. Yet when they're running and the ball hits them and rolls away, it does. It, it's kind of, there's always been these little idiosyncrasies. And um, I suppose it's uh, it's been an etiquette thing, but um, the etiquette was obviously back in the day where um, it was poor form to play on the league side and, Everyone would have had a cup of tea together on the outfield when they were fielding at square leg. And um, I think with the amount that's at stake in the game today, maybe it needs to be looked at. But um, I enjoy the little parts of cricket, like, um, you know, walking if you nick it and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, etiquette and the batsman walking onto the field first and uh, walking off the field first and the fielders walking on first and those sorts of things. I think they're to be treasured from the game. So I wouldn't want... Um, rules to be governing everything but um, having said that there might be a little bit more room for for logic here and there All right, let's look forward now enough of looking back Uh, let's assume the T20 World Cup does let's assume the T20 World Cup does come our way at some point or the other sooner rather than later Um, your take on New Zealand's chances going into the tournament good Um, yeah obviously we've got a pretty um, well what we feel is a pretty strong white ball unit Um, when you look at and global tournament results over the last you know four or five years so um, we certainly seem to play our best cricket in tournaments and um, looking at the, the some of the venues in Australia that probably suit us a little bit as well um, yeah we're, we're sort of quietly confident um, as we tend to be and um, yeah obviously the, the preparations are well underway for that but um, we'll have to uh, let a little bit of water go under the bridge first before we know sort of exactly how it's going to look but um, yeah, obviously, if I can make that team, then yeah, hopefully we'll be we're looking to to win the whole thing. I think that I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it just the same. I think as a cricketer, would you rather have this tournament delayed till a time with which you could have fans in the ground and have it with its full form, rather than do it behind closed doors? Because that experience 
wasn't quite what an international match should have been. Um, oh, look, I think certainly um, all things considered, you'd rather have fans in the ground and it certainly adds a lot to the game and you know, to the spectacle. But I think um, you want to be able to adapt to, to situations that are presented to you. And um, if it becomes you know, a situation where the only way to play cricket is to play it behind closed doors, then I think it's just something that we have to adapt to as players um, because I think the reality is um, it's a huge financial challenge for a lot of cricket boards to, to be sort of still trying to run without any revenue coming in from games. So um, obviously we want to try and um, keep the sport in as good a stead as it can be in. And if that means playing games in front of closed doors and in front of no crowds, then I think guys are just going to get used to it and suck it up and get it done. But I must say, even though you've, what you're nearing 200,000 followers on Twitter, I think you're a vastly under-followed Twitter account as far as what I can see from uh, cricketers go. But I must ask you who your uh, favourite social media account is or what your sort of favourite social media account is because I want to know if you find any cricketers funnier than you that you follow. Um, who's my favourite? Uh, I think Andy Roddick actually is... is Good. My favorite. He's a ten- tennis player from America. Um, uh, oh, I mean, it's a hard question off on the spot. Um, yeah, I mean, because you I think suppose... of it that, that most cricketers, most sportsmen tend to keep it fairly, or cricketers definitely tend to keep it, they, they're conformists, don't they? They, just, they don't really say too much. So you're, you're a better fresh air in that, but I can't think of too many others that are funny and speak their mind and, you know, give Twitterati enough entertainment. Yeah, I've had a few people tell me that Verinda Sawag is, is reasonably good on Twitter, but a lot of his um, tweets are in a different language, so I can't That's personally right. vouch for, for the, the quality, but um, a lot of Indians seem to seem to enjoy them. Yeah, let's, let's just say they're, uh, they're, they're funny, but they're also ideologically um, diverse, shall we say. Yeah, so one of those. Anyway. Uh, 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 just a little... Uh, asterisk at the bottom. I don't endorse any uh, anything during the Sawex Twitter. I don't, even, I don't even know what they are. So, yeah. yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough, Jimmy. This has been brilliant. Thanks so much for chatting with us, and uh, good luck. We hope to see you back on the field soon, and good luck with those handstand push-ups, mate. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.